Hey guys, it's Vanessa Terry here with Notary to Notary, and I want to show you guys how I was able to get started as a notary signing agent making $10,000 a month. When I first got started in 2015, I had no idea how lucrative this business was. So much so that I was able to quit my full-time job in 2016. Over the next few years, I've had so many successes and failures that I took all of them and bundled them up into a training program just for you. The training is available at notarytonotary.com and there are two programs that you can register for. The Notary Signing Agent Training and the E-Notary Training. Make sure that your state licenses e-notaries before you register for that training. Once you register, you'll have instant access to the online training platform as well as access to our live weekly interactive webinars with replay capabilities. Ready to get started? Register today at notarytonotary.com. Until then, happy signing! Hey guys, have you had a chance to get a copy of my new book, The Ultimate Ron Guide? If you are ready to build a remote online notary business, then this book is what you need. In this book, I give you all the information that you need to know in order to build a successful remote online business, no matter what state you're in, as long as your state authorizes remote online notarizations. Head on over to Amazon today and get your copy. You'll be glad you did. Interested in working remotely from home with the ability to set your own schedule? Then contact Notary to Notary, our online... Interested in working remotely from home with the ability to set your own schedule? Then contact Notary to Notary. Our online training program teaches individuals everywhere how to create and run successful notary businesses nationwide. Whether you're looking for supplemental or full-time income, We'll teach you the benefits of being a business owner, including time and financial freedom. Visit notary2notary.com to learn more about our training program. The hellos, the hellos. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. How are we doing this morning? Good morning, good morning. Ah! Coming to you live from the Notary Business Center here in Chesterfield, Virginia. Good morning. Rachel, you got the check here. Unless you came yesterday and picked it up. You have a check here, mamas. Rachel has a virtual office address here at the Notary Business Center. If you are in Virginia and you want a virtual office address, all you do is go to your registered agent. <gasps> that IO. Um, we do LLC formation, register agent, and virtual office mailboxes um, through that website there, register agent.io. Um, I was going to tell you something. Oh, and people always ask, why should you have a virtual office address? So you get one. Um, you haven't been yet. Well, come on and see me in. Come on and see me in. Um, to establish, there's some trainings happening in here. That's why it's a little loud. But um, there's, um, what's I saying? To establish business credibility. If you're going to build business credit, it's a necessity. If you're working out of your house, you cannot do that on paper. Okay. <laughs> so a few of those things like that. I'm going to look into that enrichment. Well, yeah, definitely get it. It's only um, $19.79 a month. You get a virtual um, portal. All your mail is scaled, it's scaled, scanned into it. Um, boom, 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 all that good stuff. Okay, so anyway, today we're going to be talking about um, benefits as a business owner. And so um, one of my colleagues, um, we were talking before, they're really into and heavy into insurances. And I was talking to them before about doing a live with them so they can kind of educate you guys on how it works. But how many of you guys work a job right now? And one of the main reasons that you stay at that job is either if it's not income, it's the benefits. Um, that's one of the most 
one of the most uh, popular objections that I have to kind of uh, finagle through to get people to transition. Um, really quick, I want to tell you about, um, I did a signing yesterday. I'm not going to say the name of the company, but I did a signing for the name for this company yesterday. Um, and it was really cool because the owner called me this morning and they realized who I was. And it was so cool just to have that conversation. It was really nice. Um, and he basically told me his journey. You know, he got started as a notary um, two years ago. And now he has a six a nice six figure up there, six figure um, signing service. And um, he was just, you know, talking about it, you know, how it's just been so awesome to get into the space. And I just thought that was really cool. It was really humbling uh, just to have that conversation. Um, but that's why I say it makes plenty of money to be had. And the really cool part about him and his company is he only does general annuity work. He does not even do loan signings. Um, his signing service is strictly general annuity work. So I thought it was pretty cool. And I tell you guys all the time, y'all sleep on general annuity work because you're all over social media. And everyone's like, oh, loan signing, loan signing. There's so much money, period, to be made in this space. You just have to know how. Um, but anywho, so let's talk about it. I did put the link for the virtual office address in the chat. Hold on. It was yourregisteredagent.io. That's where you go. Yourregisteredagent.io. And then just create an account and we'll get your mailbox set up today. If you're in Virginia, we do virtual office addresses. So that's what that's for. Um, we do LLC setups and register agent as well as virtual office address. If it gets too loud, I'm going to close this door. Um, but um, let me make sure I didn't miss anybody's questions. We're going to talk about benefits and things here. Um, how much did you start off with to get trained? Oh, you talking to somebody else? Oh, yeah, because I didn't pay for anyone's training. I self-taught. <laughs> I self-taught myself this industry, but it did take me two years to self-teach. So I always say to shorten that learning curve, you should take the training, get into the training, learn how to build it, shorten that learning curve. It's like if, like learning how to do them who's already mastered it. It just shortens the time it takes for you to actually get it done. You follow me? Um um, da, 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 da. All right, so let's talk about it. So I asked you guys how many people stay at your job because of the benefits. Um, whenever I do any kind of conference or um, meeting, which I'm going to the NA conference again this year, um, presenting on AI tools. Can't take the bag. Anyway, um, I love my AI. Um, but one of the main things people usually say is, okay, well, I can't quit my job um, because I am, hey. I have your name in my head stamping up notary because you're in the Google business profile service. And I emailed you back this morning. Um, um, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. And it's so much happening right now. Oh, <sighs> I'm sorry. My sister was texting and I thought she was saying she was in the hospital because I was going to say, all right, y'all, bye. But I read the message wrong. We're okay. I was like, oh, got to go. She's fine. Okay. Um, Shannon! Okay. Um, threw me completely off. She just threw me completely off. Bring it back in. Okay. Um, anywho, so when I first um, got into it, into business, well, no, rewind, rewind, rewind. What I was trying to say initially, you see she threw me off, is whenever I do a training, uh, people always say, you know, they can't leave their job because of one, bills, or because of, you know, their benefits. And so a lot of times it comes from uneducation and ignorance of, and so we don't know. So really quick, guys, just put in the chat for me, if this is one of your reasons, what benefit are you concerned about losing? Um, a lot of times it's just uneducation of how those benefits work. A lot of those things you can still maintain as a business owner. And so, for example, um, I'm going to have one of my colleagues um, come on a live. We're working on getting a date that works for everybody and works for both of our schedules where she's going to come on and she's going to talk about independent insurance that you can get. So a lot of people, they... Let's talk about the medical benefits. So let's talk about just like health insurance, for example. If you're, how much do you pay for health insurance, right? If you pay, some companies will match the whole thing and you don't pay anything. Some companies, you pay a portion of it. Some companies, you basically pay for the whole thing. But it depends on where you work. Or they, or they pay some of it, but it's really bad coverage. 
Um, and when you really start, I'm not, I am not a master of all things insurance, but I do understand the basic way that it works. Um, and as a LLC, a single member LLC, or if you have a starting service, or if you have, however you have your business set up, you can still get insurance. You can also get insurance as an individual. So you don't have to actually do it underneath your business. Okay. Um, and the thing that a lot of people say is like, oh, well, I don't want to, you know, pay for insurance. So there is two sides of it. And some people, they don't, they don't, you might not like my answer, but I'm going to tell you the truth. Okay. So when you go from your job, whatever that is, if you quit your job and you go full time on your business, one, let's say you're just getting started and you're not even really making much money. You're making something, but you're not passing. Like, I forget what the state limits are, but I think, you know, it depends on different states and kids or whatever the case is, household size. You can, first of all, qualify for state insurance. And a lot of people say, well, I don't want state insurance because yada, yada, yada. At the end of the day, it's insurance. It's not even that serious. Like, y'all thinking too hard about it. Um, but if you feel like, no, I don't want state insurance, you don't have to do it, but that's an option. So if you do go first, you leave your job, you go for state insurance, they'll tell you, like, they'll typically will ask you for a profit and loss statement. Um, if it's your first year, they'll ask you for, <laughs> JC coming with the extra right now, but ask you for a profit and loss statement, which as a business owner, the same way how you do your taxes, you just write off everything that you had to pay for. And it's the same concept, but you do it on a monthly basis. And so they'll ask you for that. Now, some states have limitations as far as like how much money you can have saved or how much, how many, how many assets you can have. So if you have like multiple properties and 401ks and, you know, different investments that make you, not, I don't say wealthy, but substantial, that may limit you from getting state insurance. It depends on what your state counts as far as what they count when they're considering if you're eligible. But I would say that that's a definitely a great route to take that a lot of people don't think of. They think that you have to be like low income, but you know, like they think of it in one way, but actually the way it works is it goes by your income. So if you're an entrepreneur and you're not generating any revenue, then you would qualify. Okay. Um, if you're not like, if you quit your job and you're just doing this and you go by your profit and loss, so you can do that. OK, that's one option. Now, let's say you don't want to do that or you don't qualify. OK, what you can do is you can then go ahead and um, get independent insurance. Now, two things you can do. One, if you have kids, OK, and you let's say it's you, a spouse and kids, that plan it's going to cost you some money, okay? What you can do is you can pay for insurance by yourself and then put your kids on state insurance. So that's an option. A lot of states give children state insurance anyway, depending on the income, yada, yada. So that's an option. You say, okay, keep my kids on state. I'll get, you know, coverage by myself, however you want to do that. Or you can go full out, full coverage. So if you're, if you're by yourself and it's just you that's getting coverage, it's a lot cheaper than if you have all situation, Okay. Um, but you can do that. And my biggest thing when I tell people when it comes to health insurance and they say, let me close the store because they're getting a little loud. Hold on. Um, when you do have, when you're going for health insurance, let's say, like we'll say right now, well, I'm not paying anything for health insurance. That's a lie. You're paying with your life and your time. So what you're doing is you're making a sacrifice. You're cutting the job that you don't like or you no longer want to do to do something that you really want to do. And so it's going to cost you. That plan may cost you $400, $500, $1,000 a month, right? But then you put it in your budget and you just budget for it. That literally is what it is. Like you have to get out of the mindset. People say, well, I don't want to pay for insurance. Well, why not? Tell me why you don't want to pay for insurance because the job that you're working for is giving it to you for free, but you don't want to be there and you're trading the rest of your life because you want health insurance instead of getting a quote. A lot of people say, well, I can't afford it. And they've never even got a quote. Like you, you don't even know what your insurance would be. You have no idea, you know, and that's a lot of times when I say, and I do this all the time when, I, when someone says, oh, but my benefits. And I say, well, how much would it cost for you to do it on your own? And they say, oh, I don't know. I didn't check. So it's not that important to you because if it was, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's like you're choosing to be ignorant of, you're choosing to settle without having the information of what it would cost me. And then all you do is include that as a business expense. Like you put it when you, like, like you know how you put your, 
Uh, if you get it through your business, that is a business expense. You write that off. You know what I mean? But if you put it in your budget, in your plan, thank you. Um, if you put it in your, just one more, it's fine. Thank you. You can take it out there. Thank you. Um, you put it in your plan and your budget for what you are taking care of, like gas, whatever, whatever, insurance. This is how much money you have to make. And the reason why I say that is just like, <laughs> you know, like people say, well, you have to get out of that mindset. I don't want to pay for insurance. Get over it. Get over it. Okay, unless you go state, which you absolutely can go like state insurance, then you budget for it and you pay for it. But my biggest thing is get a quote, figure out how much it costs. Okay, um, that's for health insurance and then health, dental, vision, all that good stuff. For me personally, it just really depends on if you use like your if you always like say you wear glasses, you may want to get vision insurance. Like I don't pay for vision for myself because I never it's, it's basically me throwing away money because I don't go. To the, you know, I don't have a vision ish, you know, I don't, y'all know what I'm saying. I don't need to go to the eye doctor. And even if I do go, an eye exam is like, what, 50 bucks, something like that. It's really inexpensive. So it's, it's, it would cost me more to have vision insurance for myself than it would be for me just to pay it out of pocket. You follow me? But if you need it, now outside of that, dental, yes, health, yes, okay? So insurance-wise, just get quotes and figure out what works for you, okay? And then put it in your budget. Okay, so that goes with health insurance. And like I said, I do have someone that's going to come on um, once I get the, not get your eyes checked, girl, I can see. <laughs> uh, but uh, if get someone that's going to, they're going to come on and just educate you guys on different insurances. And then you guys can connect with her directly. You can go out and, you know, search on your own. I'll give you some resources, resources just so you can go look out and get some rates and just figure out what you're going to pay. You know what I mean? So at least now you know and you're not, you know, just assuming, oh, I can't afford it when you really don't know. And then let's say you do get an amount of money. Let's say it's $1,000 a month. You're like, oh my gosh, $1,000 a month. No, stop looking like that. Now you budget for it. It's okay if it's $1,000 a month, I got to make this much a month to, to pay this and live the lifestyle I want. That's my new target. You see what I'm saying? People do it. It's a matter of you now setting that new goal. Okay. All right. So... So you don't come for me. I do go. I just don't go as often as I probably should. Look at she trying to come for me. Um, all right. So my quotes been so high because I have children as well. That happens. But like I said, you could put, you know, the kids can go on state. If you qualify, you can get yours independent. You kind of just got to play with the numbers to see what matches. So someone else said vacation and sick time. So vacation and sick time is not a real thing in entrepreneurial world because it's, it's, you can do what you want to do. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I don't have to put in for sick time. So, like, when you work a job and they say, okay, you work these many hours, these many days for this long, then you get to get a week off, right? Or you get this many hours. It's like you're trading time for the ability to take time off. When you work for yourself, that's, that's your call. It's not something that you have to put in for. It's just like, okay, I wake up this morning. I'm not feeling well. Okay, I'm chilling. You know, I'm gonna go ahead and rest the next two, three days. You know, it's actually more freedom in it versus having to ask someone, can I take the day off? Can I go on vacation? You know, I'm not feeling well. Can I, you know, I need a couple of days. You know what I mean? So that is not even a thing. We're going to throw that out. That's not a thing. That's not a thing. Okay. <laughs> it doesn't count in entrepreneur world. You know, that's not a thing. So 401k match, you actually won. There's some things that go with 401ks. I'm not going to get into all that. But you can roll your 401k over as an independent, as an LLC. You can do a plan for a 401k. Like if you just roll it over, you can do that. So you would then be adding to it but it's not like you don't lose it it's not going anywhere so you would roll it over to your company your own company and then you can you know add money to it as you see fit so a lot of people didn't don't know that they could do that but you can so it's not like you have to cash it out and then also depending on how you set it up now we're getting into like all the for the record i well, what's the disclaimer they say i am not a financial advisor <laughs> But I have a lot of friends that work in these spaces that help me with mine. And so anyway, my point is, yes, with the 401k, they do match it. But then there's, there's you can roll it over. But in my opinion, there are better. Mm, there are lots of ways to save and invest. 
And in my opinion, I feel like there are better investment strategies than the 401k. Um, and I think that a lot of people get the 401k because it's so common and it's like, oh, you get medical and 401k and, you know, vacation. And it's like, is this bundle deal? Everyone like, you know, rolls into, is like, you know, like, oh yeah, 401k. And this is my thing too. And it's so true. Anything that everybody does is usually wrong or is usually a harder way. Like it's, if everyone's doing it, there's usually a better way to do it. Um, and I say to say, like, I'm I'm not gonna start dropping all of this investment stuff right there because, but just know there are there are better investment opportunities for you to do than a 401k. Okay. Um, and so the 401k is is good, it has some benefits to it, but it's just my opinion. After I did all of my research and I talked to other financial advisors, there's just better tools you can use. But if you have a 401k, you can roll it over um, into your business and run it through there. So you can still keep it. It's not, you know, penalized. And sometimes you can just, uh, depending on how you have it set up, you can just leave it there. You don't have to touch it. You just leave it. Um, but, and I don't remember the rules. Well, you can only pull it out when you turn a certain age, some, 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 or you get a penalty. So there are better ways. But to each his own. Um, so that's benefits. That's the 401k. Um, sick time and stuff that doesn't really count because when you're an entrepreneur, you pull you do your own time however you want to do it. You know, that's the only thing I can really think of that businesses give you as far as benefits. Life insurance, um, some businesses do that. You can get life insurance on your own, and most companies are typically only giving you term life insurance, just not the worst. But there are better life insurance policies that you can do, especially even when it comes to investments. Um, but term is fine. But term and with term insurance, they usually only cover you while you're there. It's just don't get me started on insurances. Um, and you can get your own policy. Like so if you're getting life insurance, go get your own life insurance. You can get term insurance for a pretty decent rate um, just to keep you covered just in case. But, you know, there are investment opportunities even when it comes to insurances and so my biggest thing that i'm seeing a lot when it comes to small business owners or people who are getting into entrepreneurship is they need to take time to do some financial literacy training um do some time of, of learning you know the different tools that are out there that you can use you know i take a lot of time it was, i think probably like last year Last year, I went was really heavy into financial literacy. I still am, but now I'm studying some other things. But I've been really heavy into financial literacy and just like the different opportunities that you can use and different um, strategies that wealthy people use to compound interest, to really invest and to really make their money make money. And it's really interesting once you really learn. And when you, it's really cool, but we could do a whole talk about that. I'm not getting into that right now. Um, I When I learned about the life insurance um, policies and like how you ever heard like people say, be your own banker. There's a book. I'm just going to drop this for you. I'm not going to go too far off notary, but these are the books you should read. What would the Rockefellers do? Be become your be your own banker. Um there was another one that I read that was, I think it was Robert Kiyosaki. Um, those are the two that started me off down this insurance um, role. Robert Kiyosaki talks a lot about financial planning, retirement planning, a lot. I love all of his content. Um, he's not the only one. It's a lot of them out there that really talk about the tools that you use. And just doing the traditional methods of saving, which is just like, and Rich, he did do Rich Dad Poor Dad, but he has so much more content on top of that. So many more books, so many more trainings that he does where he really breaks it down. And um, when it gets into, because the whole point is time and financial freedom. If you're going to be doing any business and you're making money, you need to understand how the systems work. You know, you need to understand how like taxes work. That's a whole other situation. You know, understanding the tax benefits and you know, for a long time, I was paying <laughs> too much in taxes, but I'm getting better. I'm eventually I want to get to the point where I don't pay any taxes, but 
I'm, I gotta figure that out. I'm still, I'm, I'm still learning the code. Okay, but I think it's just a matter of taking the time to understand how money works. You know, a lot of times people say, you know, and it's a, it's a quote that says if, if all the money was taken away from everybody and split up evenly within a short amount of time, it would be, it would be back in those same hands because making money is not like it, it's a skill set. It's once you know how to do it, you can do it again. It's, it's just understanding like when to buy, when to save, like how the different tools and things work. And so now that you have, and most of you guys are, you know, getting into the notary space and you're figuring, okay, I want to do entrepreneurship. And these are the things that I talk about and I mention them, but sometimes I'm like having a hard time getting y'all to do a Google business profile. So, you know, when I start talking about building business credit, you know, I lose some of you guys and you're like, wait, I don't understand why. And the main thing, like when I talk about building business credit, you know, people, the first thing is, oh, I got bad credit, so I can't do it. It's ignorance of. And so when I say ignorance, ignorance is not a bad thing. I am ignorant of some things. I am ignorant of how to build a spaceship because I do not know how. OK, I'm ignorant of brain surgery because I do not know how. That's what I'm saying. And so when I talk about, OK, guys, let's build business credit. And then the first thing and I always get these emails in my inbox. I'm not even kidding. And it's just like, oh, I can't build business credit. I have, I have bad credit, bad personal credit. That's not even how business credit works. You know, and so it's or like, oh, I have a new company. I can't do it. And these are things that I don't know if you guys just make them up in your head or you found it on social. But it's a it's a it's a point of ignorance. Oh, what the inspections coming through. Let's see if I can get it. It's so hard to get it. Y'all be so fast. Let's see if I got it. I got it. Boom. OK. Um exactly so ignorant of because you haven't taken interest in it to learn it um i think the struggle is there are multiple people you have to talk to for those benefits you get at one time with your employer um i don't understand it's what other people are telling them i need a one-on-one -on -one coach to assist me send an email we do have coaching available too um in flat notary to notary but what i was going to say is that um it really just breaks down to the knowledge of. So like when I talk and I'm actually, I do coaching. I got to do business credit coaching for other businesses, not just notaries, just business in general. You'd be surprised how many businesses do not know about business credit. Like it's not even a, like, it's a lot of them. Like it's a lot of them that are like, wait, what? You know, and they just started a business and they're making money, but they're, they're like not leveraging the tools that exist to help them grow and to scale. And so um, business credit is one of those things that if you actually use it the way it's designed, if you use the tools the way that they are designed in America, and I can't speak about other countries, but in America, if you use the tools the way they're designed, if you use that LLC, if you understand the tax code, if you understand business credit, if you understand the tools that exist, honey, okay? And I don't even feel like I'm a genius in it. I feel like there's some people who, like, like I said, I have not mastered the taxes to the point where... I don't pay taxes. I still pay taxes, but I pay less <laughs> than I would have. You know, I've learned some things, but it's just a matter of continuing to increase in knowledge. So like when I learned about business credit, like that was amazing to me because if you, when the way it's designed is you're supposed to have a business idea, right? You're supposed to say, Hey, this is my idea. This is what I want to do. Form your business entity, not run it underneath yourself. And then you're supposed to get business credit to fund that business. And then once that business is operating and it's generating revenue, you then pay back your business funding and then you run your business. But a lot of people, what they do is they use their own personal money to fund their business, which is backwards. That's the way it's been done a lot of times in the past. But when business credit, I don't even know when business credit initially started, but the way business credit is designed is designed to fund your business. And then as you make money, you pay back your creditors and then you keep your revenue. And that's the way, you know, it's supposed to be. But a lot of people don't do that. And actually, I think it's a, it's a matter of lack of information because I was a part of this. Um, I want to call it a mastermind. It was like a group of entrepreneurs. And just to be completely transparent, it was a group of entrepreneurs. I think I it might have been like me and two other um, people of color and the rest. Everybody else was 
Caucasian, I guess what she called Caucasian, which I'm being politically correct. And we were, they, we all had startups. And it was interesting that they all knew about fundraising and raising capital. And it was never an idea of, oh, I'm going to use my own money. And, oh, no, we just did some rounds of, of fundraising. Like we got, you know, business funding, yada, yada. We're going to do this new business. And then they do the business. I'm not even kidding. You do the business. And, oh, it didn't work. All right, bankrupt it. Shut it down. Let's do another one. And it's like nothing. It's like you don't even think about it. It's like next one down. And when I see it, it's like, wait, what? You know, but when we think about it, if you're uneducated in that space, you don't know how business is supposed to be run. You don't understand business funding. You don't understand like how the entities are supposed to actually run and you keep yourself separate from the entities that you created. That is what, that's the beautiful part of, of having a business form, typically a limited liability company. But the beautiful part about it is it's not you. It's like another entity that you created who is doing business and you're just operating it. You're just like, oh, I'm just, I work here. I work here. It's funny. A friend, one of my coaches a few years ago, he had a company. He has several companies. And he had one company in particular that um, just hit a rough spot and they went out of business. And uh, but he he set it up the right way. He bankrupted the business and closed it. And it was funny because he would say, well, yeah, sometimes like a creditor from there will call and they'll be like, um, oh, we're looking for the owner of this company. He'd be like, oh, no, I'm just an employee because on paper, he's an employee. He's not an owner because that's the way he set it up. And so it's like, if you really understand, it's like, oh, that business, that company went out of business. But that's also why you have to understand business credit and the creditors to go to. Like a lot of people get into business credit, they go to their bank. The bank is not touching you. The, I'm telling you right now, the bank is not touching you. If you go to a bank with a new business with bad credit and no money in your account to, to uh, co-sign or to, to do, put up as collateral, they are not touching you. Because that's just not what they do. They're in a very safe space. They have a lot of products to offer. And so business funding in general is high risk. Okay, I forget the statistic. Who, who knows the statistic of like the average number of businesses that fail within the first three years? It's a high amount. It's like what? like 90 percent or something like that of businesses that fail within the first three years and so that being said it's a high risk investment for banks and for creditors period to invest into small businesses and so if you go to the traditional route they're really not messing with you because especially if you're a limited liability company now if you co-sign then they got they have you so if you you know, shut your business down. They still have you. You can't go anywhere. And so, but if you're running it the right way, a separate from, and you're not putting yourself on anything as far as a co-signer type situation, then it's high risk for them because businesses do fail. And so when you think about that, you have to go to creditors that are focused on their market is small business. And there are creditors who target solely small business. That is where they live. And so if you, that's why I say it's like understanding how business credit works to leverage it for yourself. Okay. And I think someone asked me, can you use a business credit before you even start making money in your business? Yes. So two things about that. So we have a business, have a business credit class coming up. If I'm not mistaken, I have a business credit course at notary to notary let me see if i can find it really quick but i know i have a live class so normally when i do business credits like i said i do it for more than just notaries like i help just anyone who has a business who wants to build business credit and so we have an in-person and virtual class coming up on who knows who knows let's see it's coming up Dun, dun, dun. I'm going to tell you. The course is online. So you can go through the course now. The business credit is April 29th. So April 29th is where we're doing the virtual and in-person. So you guys know when we do in-person, it's only, I think, 10 people that can come in. I don't know. I think it's already two people there. Yeah, we already have two people on there on that event. So that's coming in-person. So if you can go in-person, there's like... I'm doing the math, like eight more seats for that. But you can always get a virtual ticket and stream it. And then we do have the course online that you can go through on your own time. Plus, it just stays there in your student dashboard so you can go through it. 
Um, but I think all of these things are important when it comes to building business. You know, and I, I was talking to uh, one of my student coaching students recently, and they were, oh, I got to say something really cool. Anyway, uh, something recently, and we were talking about um, coaching in general, and I was giving her advice on what she should be doing. And I said, to be honest, I don't even tell you guys everything that I know because I don't want to overwhelm you. And to be honest, a lot of times I lose y'all. <laughs> like I do, you know, I get, I go so far down the rabbit hole and then people say, wait, like when I start talking about AI, how many, when I start talking about AI, who, if I lost, you saved me, you lost me, you know? And so for me, I try to keep it simple and easy. And then when I get someone who reaches out and say, Hey, Vanessa, I got that. Give me something. I need the advance. Then I can unload. But it's like for me, I don't unload everything because then it gets confusing and people get overwhelmed. And if you get overwhelmed and it seems like something really hard, most people have a tendency to walk away and they say, OK, this is too hard for me. And so I try to keep it really elementary level, step by step by step, going through the motions. And I do the easy stuff. That's why I say I had like you know, levels to all of my trainings. Like, okay, just start with the ultimate notary bundle, do that. That's really simple, really easy. And then we grow from there. You know, but if I just sit here and tell you every single thing, you have to be like, wait, wait, what? Wait, what are we doing? Because this is stuff that I didn't just learn overnight. Like a lot of the stuff I told y'all, I like binge content all the time, I'm always reading, I'm always learning things. And so it's just like, you know, and the biggest thing I, that, I think the thing that motivates me more is when you know the fact the fact is how much money you make is equivalent to what you know right now if you want to make more money you have to know more that is a fact okay and so when i know okay well i'm not a billionaire right i'm not like elon Musk status i'm not like jeff bezos i guarantee you factually they know more than i do i'm not that's not even a, a guess that's not a guess i was into um I interviewed Elon Musk did with this marketer and uh, Elon Musk had added, asked the question and the marketer had answered it. And he said, I just want to know what you thought about it. And the guy answered it and Elon was like, well, that's wrong. But I just want to know what you thought. But this guy was pretty decent. Like he was a legit been doing it for a while. And, you know, so it's like it's levels to it. And so to be to know that there's more to know. If I want to get to a higher level, I have to know more. And so you have to basically become obsessed with information, because, but not just learning it to have it, learn it to apply it. Um, I get overwhelmed by all the online courses. I do better with someone telling me everything. So that's what, exactly my point. So that's why I say um, people, I tell everybody, just start with one course. Go to notary to notary.com, get one course and just focus on it. Study it. When you when I'm talking about something, you do it. Like just do that. Don't say, oh, okay, now I have all 18 courses. And then you sit back and like, ooh, this is a lot, right? It is. Like if you're trying to learn a trademark, you know, and then build business credit and then SEO and then loan closings and then e-notary and then, you know, and it's like, wait, hold on. You got to pick something to master. Don't even get me started on adding like apostilles and, you know, fingerprinting and general. And then it gets overwhelming. And that's why you have to pick one thing to master. You know, you pick one thing, you study, 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 and then implement. And then once you get it, all right, good. Next. You know, you follow me? You just have to do one, focus on one, learn it, master it, you know? So even when we're talking about, you know, like business insurance or we're talking about life insurance, whatever we're talking about, pick one target, study it, die, you know, completely involve yourself in it, master it, and then move on. Don't do a bunch, and a lot of people do that. They get into the space and they say, oh, I'm going to do a little bit of everything. I'm going to do general notary work, long closing, e-notary, I plus e, fingerprinting, courier, boom, I mean, they just everything. And they're making no money. Because you're like, you should, what's, the, what's the quote? It says, um, if you try to catch eight rabbits, you'll catch none. Because you keep trying to be like, pick one and focus. Okay. All right. So I will let you guys know when that training is. But remember I told y'all that I ordered something really cool. If you are local to me and you want to come get some, well, come get one. We got we to gotta share and be nice. You can get like one. Uh, 
Who remembers these? I will tell you guys when the um, class is going to be. So this is like, these are for my, if you are my generation, you know what these are, okay? When I forget, I was thinking about them. I said, man, those donuts used to be so good. And I found them online and I ordered them. And so if you get these, honey, you got to put them in the microwave. That's the only way you can do it. You got to let the bag heat up like how they used to do in school. So if you don't, who doesn't know what these are before you be like, but that's what you're talking about. If you are local to me, feel free to come in and get some donuts. I ordered a whole case. Okay, listen, I don't know they're going to be here tomorrow. I put out all, like, I text my friends and stuff and told them, girl, look what I got. What? Everybody's like, oh, I'm coming. So if you don't know, <clears throat> these are the donuts that they used to sell in, the way used to give us for breakfast in elementary school. I don't know if they did it in middle school and high school too. I just remember getting them in elementary school, but these are so good. Okay. And I want to tell you something. You said Krispy Kreme don't have nothing on those. See, Tiffany, you need to come get you some donuts, girl. You need to come on, come on down here. Come get you some donuts. I'm going to put some to the side for you because you, you with me. You with me. Do you know, this is the one too, when I ordered it, they canceled my order on accident. They actually sent me the case for free. And so when I saw it was getting delivered, I got super hyped. <laughs> Feel free to come get you some donuts, okay? I might have to keep these on, on standby if y'all really like them. I'm going to keep ordering them for the office because let me tell you really quick how I used to do this, okay? Really quick. So I want to know, who did anybody else used to have these? Is it just me? Y'all know when you go back, it's like the, the going back and back in the day, and it's like, oh, my gosh. So this is how I used to eat these donuts. I want to know if it's just me. I don't think it is, but y'all can tell me. Y'all know how I got a, a weird eating habit. Okay, so first of all, you put them in the microwave. They come in the microwave, but you put them in the microwave. And then when you open it, you take the skin off. So like the 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 outside, you eat the outside first. You peel the skin off. You said I told you I'd be there in May. Okay, all right, girl, I'm going to see you in May. Uh, let me know so I can make sure I have some. Because <laughs> I already know they're going to be gone in the next couple of days. Um, I take the skin off. And then so now you have a donut with none of the the little the skin is really good i keep calling the skin but it's the outside and then you ball it up right so you take the donut and you ball it up into like a ball and then you got this ball like a donut ball <gasps> it's so good so i'm gonna do that but not on this live because y'all not gonna make fun of me but that <laughs> it's the little things y'all it's the little things that just make everything worthwhile i promise you is it weird it's not weird it's not weird. I have a lot of weird food habits. Y'all put your week really quick. And then I'm gonna do a giveaway. Whenever I go, whenever I go left field, I gotta do a giveaway. So real quick, the crust. Thank you, baby. Real quick, we're gonna talk about our uh weird food habits, and then I'm gonna do a giveaway, Amazon gift card giveaway. Okay. I always do that when I squirrel. Okay, so I have a couple weird food habits that I'm just gonna throw out there. And we're going to see who can match me. Actually, we're going to see who, 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 who does what I do, okay? So outside of my donut balls, I put ketchup on my macaroni and cheese because it was good. I can't even eat honey buns, for the record. Don't, honey buns have entirely too much sugar on it to me. That's why I don't like Krispy Kreme. It's too much sugar. It's like, like how, it's just like, how can you eat so much sugar? I don't understand that. Like, it, it's like you can taste the sugar. You might as well get a cup of sugar and just eat it. I just, oh, I don't understand. I could never. I could never eat a honey bun. I could eat a honey bun, and I can't eat a Krispy Kreme donut with the glaze on it. It's just too much sugar for me. I've never been able, even when I was younger, I could not eat it. Um, But I do ketchup with my macaroni and cheese. Yeah, ready for another one? And actually, it's really good. Miracle Whip on my spinach. It's really, really good, Okay. Miracle Whip on my spinach, um, barbecue sauce on my spaghetti, because that's delicious. You said I made that mistake, <laughs> okay, on my spaghetti. I with, So this other thing, with fried chicken, I don't like the crust, so I take off the skin of the fried chicken. I don't like it. It's, no. It was like, what's wrong with you? I don't like the skin of fried chicken. Um, not just... <laughs> Don't do that. Don't do that. Stop. 
I'm, I'm going to stop telling y'all that because I don't, y'all not going to judge me. I, I don't need to be judged. Okay, listen. I, I know my food is good. Oh, you know what else is good? Ranch on spaghetti. If you've never done it, ranch on spaghetti is really good. I'm telling you what I know. Go get some ranch and put it on your spaghetti and stir it up real nice. It makes like a little creamy sauce. I can't even explain it. I don't like chicken skin. I can't do it. It's not happening. I can't. No, you can eat it. I'm going to pass. I'm going to go over here. Go. You know what I do like about the chicken? It's really weird. I like the cartilage. <laughs> you like the little, the little white cartilage piece? <laughs> it's crunchy. It's good it's good i don't know that's enough y'all can be like vanessa what's happening i don't know i eat weird i guess i just eat weird i like you know mm -hmm. oh, that's enough i hate ketchup on my eggs i think anyone who does it it makes me sick to my stomach i don't even want to think about it we're done we're moving on it's gross it's gross it's gross pizza ranch on pizza i like blue cheese on my pizza sour cream in your spaghetti Oh my gosh. Look, she's like, oh my. <laughs> Sour cream and spaghetti? I don't know about that. I think the ranch might go better. That's just, that sounds like a lot at one time. You know what is good? French fries dipped in applesauce. So I found out about that when I was in elementary school. My applesauce touched my French fries and I ate it anyway. And it was so good. So yeah, I like French fries. You know what else is good? French fries dipped in Wendy's Frosties. If you get a chocolate Wendy's Frosty and you dip a French fry in there, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. <laughs> I think I think everyone has weird foods that they just like, and it's just like, oh, I, we just like weird foods, you know. And I think that's where that's where the good. Yeah, have you guys ever had crumble cookies? Coleslaw in spaghetti. Coleslaw in spaghetti. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. That's just, okay, I got the best one. I, you can't top this, okay? I don't really like hot dogs, right? I'm not a hot dog girl. I eat a hamburger, I don't like hot dogs. However, I love, if you get the hot dog bun and you put, you put the hot dog in it, hot, right? Hot, hot dog. And you put some ketchup on it, right? Let it sit for like 20 seconds. You spin the hot dog around in the bun, right? So now the hot dog juices is all on the bread, right? Let it sit for a minute. Take the hot dog out, eat the bread. Why? It has the hot dog flavor and the hot ketchup. Mm, 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 mm. I don't know why. But that's how I like my hot dogs. I never eat the hot dog. I put it on there. I spit it around. I might take one bite just to say I didn't waste it. Then take the hot dog out and I eat the bread. I don't know. Where are you originally from? New York. I'm from New York. <laughs> nice. And are you guys having pregnancy cravings? <laughs> I think we're just a little cuckoo. You said I was with you on the Krispy Kreme. Everything you said after that, you lost me. <laughs> Wait a minute. She said, oh my God, you need Jesus. <laughs> yeah, if y'all ever see me at a cookout, you gonna see me do it. You gonna see me. <laughs> oh. Listen, Ugh, that's it. Mayonnaise on cauliflower. I'm not really a big cauliflower girl. I do like broccoli. I like broccoli though, with cheese. That's my thing. Um, oh, this is the last one. Last one, then we do a giveaway. Bush's baked beans mixed with macaroni salad. And I know y'all probably did before because you probably had a cookout and you had the macaroni salad and the beans and they kind of touch, mix them together. Delicious. Delicious. You're welcome. You're welcome. I didn't say that I was a chef. I said I was a notary expert. That was it. <laughs>
That was it. Okay. <laughs> Y'all don't come for me. <laughs> I just have a different palette. Oh, we should have a notary cookout. We should not just talk. Or I like Bush's baked beans on Velveeta mac and cheese. If I get Velveeta, I'll put a Bush's baked beans on it. I'm telling you. A little bit of ketchup. Stir it all together. I'm telling you. Well, we know what everyone's having for lunch. <laughs> You don't like beans? Beans are good. All right, let's do a giveaway. Let's do it. Let's let's a, can I do the cooking for the cookout? I don't like cooking for real, y'all. It's just I can eat. I'm not I'm not, I'm not Chef Boyardi. All right, let's do a give, let's do a uh, Amazon gift card giveaway. You ready? Ba boom, ba boom. She said, I don't know what I just walked into. Hot sauce with the Hidden Valley Ranch on steak. Hmm. I would try that. I would try that. I would try that. Um, side note, me and Ebony, you know Ebony Locke? She was one of my students that went and, and uh, made great money doing this. And I did a story about her. Uh, we went out to a lunch or dinner and we made this secret sauce and it was so good. It was like hot sauce, barbecue, blue cheese. I don't know. We mixed a bunch of sauces together. We both were at the table like, oh my gosh. It was like a Krabby Patty sauce. I'm telling you. Anyway, give away. Here we go. All right. Here we go. Oh, all right. So the question is, did you guys know we have Google business profile management services? I'll send an email out about it. Um, What? I'm trying to make sure it's not too hard, but it's not too easy. Maybe I'll do a hard one. I haven't done a hard one in a long time. Let's go hard. Hmm. Okay. This is a hard question. I'll do a hard and I'll do it easy. Man, it's not that simple. But we're going to try it. So, see, it is different when you're doing different states. Different states have different laws. Okay, let's see if I can do this really simple. Let's do a marketing one. I'm going to do a, okay, yeah, I got you. Okay. Easy one, easy question. What is, oh, I got it. What is. No, it's a lot harder than I thought. I'll just do an easy one. What is the best way to get general notary work clients that I always say? That was a really easy one. That's a really easy one. But yeah, the first question. What's the best way to get general notary work clients? That's the first one. The second one is, When you're doing an apostille and the document is a federal document, where do you send it? When you're, ooh, a signing. When you're doing an apostille and the document's a federal document, where do you send it? Mm, it's the $40 for me. <laughs> That's a no-go. Um, I'll do it for $70. I know it's only one, but that's still a drive. I mean, it's not that far, but still. I know I don't leave the house for less than 50. Uh, Terry got the first one. Alexis got the second one. So it goes to DC's office for to get the apostille. How many of you guys have done, have done apostille work? I said, I pastel, I pasti, I pastile. <laughs> I forgot I did a joke about that. Um, so it depends. Sometimes it doesn't go to Secretary of State. Sometimes it's just DC. But I said, I pasti is kind of tricky. It depends on the document. Um, 
it really depends on the document and you know really depends on the document period because different documents require different things um but i love aqua steelwork i think it's amazing and it's phenomenal and it's my best friend ever Yay. All right, guys. So if you want, send me an email, info at notarytuner.com. I'm going to go ahead and take the crust off this donut, roll it up real nice, and eat it because it's delicious. Yes, it is, sir and ma'am. If you, a pasta is my biggest money. Ooh, she likes our pastilles. I love it. It's really good and it's easy. Well, it's easy once you learn it, like anything. Once you learn it, it's easy. But it can cost you a lot of money if you don't know what you're doing. Disclaimer, okay? Just like e-notary can cost you money if you don't know what you're doing. Really, anything can cost you money if you don't know what you're doing. So we don't have any active promos right now, I don't think. Let me see. We miss. We're not doing 70% off anymore. That one's done. But we did have... Mm -mm -mm. I don't think we have anything. Um, I didn't know that was still active. 2022 is active, and that gives you 20% off of the online training. And we do have the, um, let me take this off. I might run up. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's text for 20%. I saw that. The training is online. It's in the non notary work course. Um, I have a list of the, I didn't hear it from the last giveaway email. I feel like you look really familiar. Your name is really familiar. So you would have got it right from Amazon as an email if you sent an email. So then if you did send one, then I have to check this email me again. And then I could probably resend it. I really don't know how Amazon gift cards work like that, but I'll see. Send me an email. We'll do some, some, uh, not y'all saying I sent the email. T, I did see your email. I forwarded it to on time signings. It's on my list of things to do. I have to look into it. I haven't looked into it yet, but I will. And it wouldn't have been mails. It would have been an email. It would have been an email, but I'll look into it. Um, I didn't hear from the last, I saw that one. Secretary of State, yada, yada, yada. The non notary work course is the one that you would take. And I will keep you guys posted when we have the um, insurance class. Too. And it's not going to be a class. It's going to be like a live stream. So you're going to come on, answer a bunch of questions for us, and we're going to keep it shamoving. Keep it shamoving. Okay? Be awesome on purpose. If you want to get started building your notary business, just go to notarytrainer.com and get into the ultimate notary training. And I will see you guys the way go. I'm going to enjoy this donut now. And until next time, happy signing and all of the above. Interested in working remotely from home with the ability to set your own schedule? Then contact Notary to Notary. Our online training program teaches individuals everywhere how to create and run successful notary businesses nationwide. Whether you're looking for supplemental or full-time income, we'll teach you the benefits of being a business owner, including time and financial freedom. Visit notarytonotary.com to learn more about our training program.